Okay, so in this video we're looking at multiplying monomials. Now just before you freak out and say, um, I'm trying to scare you with fancy word, mono simply means one and nomial, uh, yeah, nomial actually, uh, means parts, one part. Okay, so when I'm saying multiplying monomials, I'm actually talking about two terms. Okay, and when I'm multiplying two terms, so let's say multiplying multiplying uh, two terms it's probably going to make sense to put each term in a bracket okay like that and that's just going to be the the common notation when I multiply two terms and it's simple all I do is add sorry not add multiply multiply coefficients coefficients I think that's spelled wrong and write down all the variable factors all the variable factors okay Let's look at a few examples. Okay, let's keep that open. Cool. Let's say we have two x y that is being multiplied with three z x. Okay. So now we can see we've got multiplying the coefficients. We are multiplying two times three, which gives me six, and then I just write down all of the variable factors. Okay, so I've got x, y and z, x. Okay, now some of you are sharp and you would say, oh, but you can multiply the x's together as well. Well, um, yes, we can, instead of just saying 6x, y, z, x, we can say this is 6x and since there are two x factors, we can just put it there. Okay and y z so let me just do one example and then I'm quickly going to just explain the commutative okay the commutative property of multiplication the commutative property of multiplication commutative means I can swap them around in other words two times 3 gives me 6 and 3 times 2 also gives me 6 which means that when I multiply it doesn't matter which one I multiply first and the reason why this is important is because actually up here just that means 6 and now this means two x factors so x x y z and this is not exactly the same as that. Here the x is in the end, and here we've got uh, the x next to the other x. Okay, But according to the commutative property of multiplication, it doesn't matter. When we are multiplying, in other words, factors can be swapped around. Okay, When we multiply, we can swap around. So whether I put the x here and swap it around with a z, uh, then I'll have 6xy, xz, and then I swap it around again, then I've got 6xxyz. Okay, so it doesn't matter how I swap them around, which means that because the coefficient is also just a factor, it's, it's multiplying this expression, um, it doesn't matter where that one is either. This, this is the same. If I say x squared y z 6, okay, this is not the common way of writing it because we like to tell, um, to read how many of these terms we have in the front, but we could have written it like that as well. That is the commutative property of um, multiplying. Okay. Next, let's just look at an example like this. What if I have something like 3y2z squared? Okay. Notice how this whole bracket is being squared. Now, what this, remember what the exponent tells us is how many times are we multiplying it by itself. So this simply means that I've got a bracket 3y squared z times itself. In other words, here I have it as 
a factor once, and here I have that whole bracket as a factor again. 3y, z, like that. Okay, and now we see using our um, the way that we multiply two mono monomials, we just multiply coefficients and write down all of the variable factors. So 3 times 3 is 9, then y squared z, y squared z. Okay, but let's quickly see y squared actually means yy and z and then yy again and then z. Now when we do the commutative property we can write this as 9 y y y y z z okay and then we see oh, okay that can be written much simpler by saying 9 y to the power of 4 because we have 4 y's okay so it's a, to the power of 4 or a 4 exponent and then z with a 2 exponent okay good now let me just quickly show you then a few exponential laws. When we work with exponents, as we showed here, where we have a base and exponent, there are a few laws we can actually use. Law 1, and we're going to look at this much more in depth later, but law 1 says that when I have a base and an exponent and I multiply it with the same base and another exponent then I can write down this base and add up the exponents so n plus m okay and this this is actually fairly simple because this tells me how many b's I'm multiplying and then I'm multiplying b again this many times so in total I'm multiplying b n plus m times okay I'm not going to look at all of the uh, laws at this stage and um, there's another law and that law actually says that when I have a base and an exponent and I and this whole thing has an exponent itself okay then I can actually multiply those exponents okay that's another law again um, this I think this is law 3 okay but we'll look at that more in depth later but just to show you how we could have used these laws to get a brief answer for 3y to z squared. Okay. We could have seen that this is, as we say, we write it out twice. Okay. So we say 3y squared z, 3y squared z, and then we saw, okay, we've got 9 then y squared z, y squared z. And notice when there is no exponent, it actually just means there's a little 1. It doesn't mean 0 because this tells me how many factors I have of z. And I've got one factor of z here and another factor is here. So there is a little 1. Okay, so how many factors do I have for y? I've got 2 here and another 2 there. So I've got y, 4, taking 2 plus 2. And I've got z2, taking the exponents and adding them together. Okay, and that is a simple way of doing uh, this very quickly. I think I'm going to stop this video right here and in the next video we will look at the distributive property. Uh, we looked at the commutative, commutative property. In the next video the distributive property and then also how to multiply binomials, in other words two terms with two other terms. Okay, see you in that video.